Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Welcome back to making tower defense games. These bugs look really bad. I think it is now officially time that I go and replace these uh, replace these these bug graphics with something else. And I I lost already. I'm not promising that the models that I made for these things are going to be great. Um, if anybody if anybody would like to uh, to contribute towards this project, if you have better 3D modeling skills than I do. Uh, feel free to try your hand at this. Um, anyway, so what these look like, I've uh, I've gone and on my own time, uh, I've gone and created some some very basic, uh, where's the workspace folder, some very basic um, insect models. And these are essentially, I, I would call these animation, except they're really just, they're hardly animation. They're, um, they're two different models, one with like one half of a walk cycle, the other with another. Here's the ant. Uh, this is not the most impressive ant you have ever seen, but it should do the trick. Uh, this is its other its other walking cycle. It's basically taking a step with the other foot. It's basically mirrored along the um, the y-axis. Um, every time I close Model Creator for Game Maker, the uh, OBS OBS has a moment. I should just minimize it instead of closing it. This is the grasshopper. This is a little bit more elaborate. Again, not super good. I am not a three D artist. I I have the 3D art capabilities that are just enough to sort of make placeholder art when I need it. Um, anyway, this is what we're going to be working with. Uh, the first order of business is going to be, I've removed the model loading code from this, haven't I? That, where did, um, uh, where did, where did Bombardier go? Apparently I opened it twice, okay. Well, the game is functional anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert each of these into a uh, just a vertex buffer. And I can do that using either, you can write code to do this yourself to iterate over the contents of a model and write its, its vertex data to a buffer or something like that. Um, I've, I've taken some great, some great pleasure in writing a tool to do this more or less automatically for me. And to do that, I can find where is, where is Penguin? How do you, what is alphabetical order? Uh, I can, I can open up this little, this little thing with a little penguin on it. And I can just, uh, convert each of these, each of these, uh, insect 3D objects into a, a vertex buffer with a given format. So let me just drag these in. I think, I think these will be the right size. If you want to, by the way, um, let me turn off wireframes. If you want to just see what they all look like, this is a gnat. That's a gnat flapping its wings. This is a grasshopper. That's a grasshopper taking a step. It's very awkward, but it, again, it'll do the job. Pill bugs. You can barely see its little legs, but it's got legs, um, back and forth, taking steps. The ant, again, taking steps, and an aphid. Um, not the, not the greatest aphid I've ever seen, but it's lumpy and it's green and it looks like something that if I, if I let it anywhere near a rose bush, it will utterly destroy it. So, let's see, let me select all of those. Uh, the vertex format is, okay, so most likely by the end of this video, I will actually be removing texture coordinate from the vertex format of everything that is used in this game, just because everything is using vertex colors now and I have no need for texture. But we'll cross that bridge when we, when we get there. Let me just export selected and let me save this in um, in the game's data files. I'm going to go and create, I think in here, let me create another folder and call this foes or something like that. And we're gonna save as a vertex buffer and that should, that should work. Uh, I think the size is, is good enough. They're, as you can see, they're approximately the same size as each other, and I'm pretty sure this should be, this should work in-game at least. If not, I can just, I can expand them a little bit. Okay, so those guys are all now vertex buffers. I am going to look in... I think, uh... How about the faux data database? Actually, you know what? So I do still have a uh, game maker model loading code in here. Uh, do I have a, like a load model? I could have sworn I had code to just load a, a load of vertex buffer, like just a short, a short script to load a vertex buffer from a file. 
But I guess I don't, and I can do that now. So let me just real quick uh, define a function that says load vbuff I can um, var buffer is going to equal buffer load from the file name. Uh, var v, v buff is going to be buffer, um, actually vertex create buffer from buffer. Um, source buffer can be the one that we just loaded. The format can be the vertex format. We can buffer, buffer delete the, the source buffer and just return, return v buff like that. That's what this returns, right? Oh no, it's a model data containing the file name and the vertex buffer. Okay. I, I mean, I guess I can do that too. Sure. Um, return new model data containing the file name and the vbuff in that case. Okay. So we're going to, instead of saying load model, we're going to say load vbuff. We are going to, instead of, instead of loading each of these individually, um, let us, ah, oh God, what were the file names? So they're all in a folder called foes. So that's going to be foes forward slash ant zero, ant zero dot v buff. Um, this is going to be a pillbug zero dot v buff. Uh, this is going to be nat zero dot v buff. I'll deal with the, uh, the second frames of, of walk cycle momentarily. And lastly, uh, foes forward slash, oh no, this is not lastly, aphid zero dot v buff and uh, grass hopper zero dot v buff. Okay, let's see. When are these drawn? When are foes drawn? Um, I believe that would be entity foe. These probably have their own draw methods, right? Their own render somewhere, like down here. Okay, so here we have a vertex, um, a transform being built. We're setting the world matrix and we are, let me instead of vertex submitting using a texture, let me just vertex submit using negative one, like this. And we should at least see a bunch of 3D objects walking in. Okay, cool, that's, that's great. That's, I mean, they're not perfect. They're a little bit on the small side. I might wanna make them a little bigger. They're, um, they're not facing the direction that they're moving in, but we can work on that. So, all right, let me get rid of this. I think I have no need for um, the sprite, do I? Let me, let me remove all references to the sprite like this. Um, I'm going to hard code in, uh, like say two models for the walk cycle. Um, if you'll give me a moment, actually, you know, what? I'll take care of that later. That'll be the next thing I do. First thing I'm going to do is just going to be getting rid of the, uh, and this is an S part. That's not one of my sprites. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is just going to be getting rid of the sprites. Um, let's see. If I can just rectangle select that region and delete everything, there we go. Um, and there should not be any more references to, for example, SPR faux ant anymore. Yeah, there's no references to that. I can delete this, this folder of temporary stuff. And the game should still work. And I will, I will make a commit as soon as I see that the game is working. Or at least working kind of. All right, so I can send in everything at once. I guess we can also see the, okay, so aphids are, aphids are definitely a little on the small side. Um, Next, they're going to come in as grasshoppers. Those are also a little on the small side. You might expect those to be bigger just because they're sort of boss enemies, but okay. Let me make a commit. Um, foes are uh, 
if I was a model using vertex buffers with vertex color, that is the, uh, the objective here. Next, let me give these things a second frame of animation as I started to do. Um, actually, you know, instead of hard coding in to, um, instead of hard coding in to, uh, two arguments to the, to the pro data constructor, let me just make that an array and I'll say models plural. And in the, in the database setup, I can take this, I can copy it and let me just load this into an array like so and this should uh that should that should have the syntax errors going away and we can have these guys um taking the uh, the alternate step of if you want to call it that animation next we just need to actually make the foes render using something resembling an array uh, so instead of class.model.vbuff, it might be class.models, let's say, current second mob two. So they will appear to uh, they will appear to take a step every second, um, or something like that. We can tweak the timing. There are plenty of ways that you can tweak the timing of this. And okay, they should be stepping now. And it looks like they are actually okay. They are. It's just it's just awkward because their legs are so small and you can't really see it. Definitely can't see those guys stepping. Yeah, they're they're definitely okay. So instead of instead of taking a half instead of taking a, a step every second, it should probably be some, something more like every quarter of a second. The current second is unfortunately in um uh, integers. Uh, there is current time which is a millisecond since the game has started. So you could say current time divided by like a thousand mod 0.25 or something. Uh, you could also, since it would probably look pretty weird if everything is just marching in lockstep. Do foes have a, um, a timer that ticks up for like how long they've been on the field? It doesn't look like they do. Uh, when a foe is created, it's going to have a lifetime value set, uh, set. That is going to tick up every um, uh, one per second. And that's that's going to tell us how long the foe has been alive. So in update, I can say, let's see if immobilizes, if you're not immobilized. Actually, you know what? If you are immobilized, that's fine. Uh, self dot lifetime plus equals delta time value. And that is going to, that is going to essentially replace this self dot lifetime uh, let's say divided by four I think actually you know what no it would be times four wouldn't it we should have a we should have these guys taking one one step per uh, or updating one frame of animation anyway per quarter of a second And you're too small, I can't see. Okay, you're doing it, good. We're gonna call that animating in giant quotes because that is really pushing the, uh, pushing the definition of animation. Okay, next I would like them to, uh, I would like them to face the direction in which they're moving. Uh, all of these models are oriented towards the, towards the right, uh, which is, more or less by design because this is towards the right is going to be zero degrees. Uh, so if something is walking to the right, they're going to they're going to be have a direction of movement of zero degrees. They're going to have a bearing of zero degrees, at least according to Game Maker. If something is more moving, say up, they're going to have a bearing of ninety degrees. And knowing this, I can just use this direction of movement as, and the um, as the z rotation in in the world matrix. So. Let's see, entity foes. Do these guys have like a previous position? They definitely have an X. I don't think they do. So I'm gonna say self dot previous position is gonna equal uh, self dot position dot X self dot. Actually, this has to be X self dot position dot X uh, Y self dot position dot Y Z. 
myself that position dot z like this. Um, I guess I can make this nicer and not put it all on the same line. And in the uh, in the update in the update method, we can just uh, update this at the end of every update. Let's see, update. Um, I'm going to call this in a uh, call this in a function. Like this, uh, this is going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to simply update um, the entities x, y, and z positions, and at the end of at the end of the update method, we're just going to call the update previous positions. Okay. Do uh, okay. So foam midge doesn't ha doesn't override the uh, doesn't override the update method. If any if any foe overrides the update method, you will want to call this in order to make this work. Anyway. When it comes to rendering, uh, matrix set position rotation dot z. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna define a variable called var bearing. That's going to essentially be point direction uh, from self dot previous position dot x, self dot previous position dot y to self dot position dot x, self dot position.y, uh, that is going to get our bearing. I can add that onto the z rotation. This is, if if you're trying to do advanced like transformations in 3D space, this would probably fall apart pretty quickly, but I am not expecting, and let's see, are we actually going to turn in the direction that we're going? No, not really. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, let me finish that thought. If you are actually having these 3D objects rotating in complex ways, uh, this would probably fall apart pretty quickly. You would probably start to have trouble with rotations. You would probably, if you go far enough, start to start to have fun with gimbal lock. Um, but these guys are only really going to ever be rotating on one axis. Uh, and by, by that, I mean like the Z axis, they're only going to be rotating in the direction that they're facing. So I don't expect that'll be a problem. Now, with that said, why is why is this not not working? It looks like bearing is always being z. Oh, you know what? Instead of calling this at the end of self update, I need to call this like at the beginning, right before it moves. Like right before here, I need to I need to call update previous positions here before the x, y, and z are actually updated for that for that frame. Because as it was with uh, with the previous positions being updated at the end of the update method, um, these values by the time the draw event happened, these values were the same, and the direction of zero, the direction of a point to itself in game maker terms is zero, and um, yeah, now they're now they're facing the direction that they should be moving in. See, hooray! All right, that is satisfying. This almost looks like a game now. All right, so that's worthy of a commit. We can. Uh, we can say foes are foes are turned to face the direction that they're moving in. Next, um, I do kind of want to make the scale bigger. Um, I could resize everything. I could resize all the objects in the model creation tool, and then like re-import them. That honestly will probably take a while. I am going to cheat because I am feeling lazy and just multiply the scale of everything by two, like this. And that should that should make them big enough to see. If this is too big, I'll make it like 1.5 or something, but uh, if I were to redo these these 3D objects, I might make the legs a little bit bigger. Just so that they're easier to see, but honestly, this is probably good enough. Let's. Those are the pill bugs. Those actually look like pill bugs now, and not just infinite segments off of a off of a millipede or something like that. Those these things when they were just sprites that I drew in Paint or the the sprite editor or whatever, they they looked really gross. I'm sorry, my past self. There was that was really inexcusable. Aphids also looked really bad. Um, but those actually don't look as bad as I was expecting that they would. This is actually like within reason. Let's, sorry, that's more ants. I want to see the, um, 
grasshoppers. Now that's, that, those make sense. See, it's hard to see their legs moving and their legs, like, if you look closely at them, they do look like they're just sort of, like, tripping over themselves. Um, but that gets the job done. The, the gnats, actually, that, I like the way their wings look. Although, uh, they should probably be raised a little bit off the ground more than they are. Okay, on my own time, I will re-import the, um, I will re-import the gnat meshes. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I'm doing that now. Hang on. BRB. Cut away. This thing kind of looks like, like, a gray version of the Golden Snitch if you zoom in on it. I have the power of video editing at my disposal. I might as well use it. Anyway, so that's all, that's all, that's all done. I can, I can just say, like, made faux, faux meshes better. I keep flip-flopping back and forth between calling them meshes and models. Okay, was there anything else I wanted to do before I, uh, before I tackle the, the big one that I have in mind? No, it looks like that's it. Okay. Uh, so this card here. Once the bugs have proper 3D models, you can remove the vertex texture coordinate from the vertex format and save a few bytes per vertex. So currently, uh, the included files for this game take up 60 megabytes, which is small in the grand scheme of things, but considering how simple this game is, one might hope that, that it was actually somewhat smaller than that. Um, I should be able to take off about 10 megabytes, um, according to my, my estimation, if I remove the texture coordinate attribute from all of the vertex buffers, and rendering should perform slightly better if I were to go into, for example, these shaders that we're using and remove the, uh, remove the vertex texture coordinate from, from this. Um, I am, I am somewhat regretting the choice back, way back at the beginning to try and just use this, um, use this 3D lighting shader that I made and just, like, import it and use it as a, like, monolithic library, uh, way back at the beginning of the game because I've, I've been messing with it quite a lot lately. Uh, regardless, this is the vertex shader. We do not need that. Uh, varying v underscore v text cord. We do not use that. I'm going to need to mess with both the vertex shader version of this of the shader, as well as the fragment shader version of the shader, because uh, the vertex shader version is used on the Raspberry Pi, whereas the fragment shader version is used on everything that isn't a Raspberry Pi. Um, let's see. I can just say color equals v underscore v text cord. In this case, we don't need to sample from the texture. That should be good. By the way, speaking of the Raspberry Pi, I did find out that it seems that uh, partial derivatives are actually not supported on uh, Linux, which is a bit annoying. And with that in mind, I think I will be deleting this attribute. I think I will be... Um... Let, me, uh, let, me, let me finish this before I finish that thought. Uh, the text cord. Remove the texture sample. I will just switch the, the outline shader to the Sobel filter rather than actually using partial derivatives because I do want, like I don't expect this game to run at like 60 frames per second flawlessly on a Raspberry Pi, but I do want it to at least run. Um, I think I showed a screenshot of what it looked like in the, um, at the end of the last video, but if I didn't, it's just, it's just a black screen because the, um, the shader with the DF, DX and DFDY just didn't compile. Uh, so I'm going to probably deal with that at the very end of this video. All right, if I run the game now, I think nothing will be drawn, and we're just going to see an error message popping up in the console saying Vertex format mismatch or something like that. Uh, oh no, it, it does actually work, even though it's uh, the data has a uh, texture coordinate that it's not using. All right. This is going to involve a little bit of work. So I need to I need to bulk process all of all of the vertex buffers in the uh, the environment folder. This is all three of the Kenny models. I need to bulk process all of these and also all of these and also all of the uh, the fuse data, the fuse vertex buffer data from each of the maps. And I need to just essentially iterate over each and every one of these and remove the texture coordinate. I am not doing that by hand. I am going to write a little tiny bit of automation, and I'm going to hopefully do that do that myself. Um, let's see. So if I were to go back to the uh, the 3D model converter that I wrote, um, if I 
if I had planned around this from the beginning, and this is one of those, like, planning foresight things that I don't think I did especially well in the series that I want to talk about in the postmortems that I'm going to be doing whenever this game is finally done. Um, but when, when you export a vertex buffer from this thing, uh, you can choose the vertex attributes that it, that it goes with. If you didn't need the texture UVs, you could just remove the texture UVs. If you didn't need the color, you could just remove the color. Uh, position and normal are kind of hard. Well, position anyway is kind of hard to do without. You might not even necessarily need the normal. That's actually another thing that you can that you can do without a vertex attribute if you use DFDX, DFDY. But anyway, uh, doing that from the beginning might have saved a little bit of time. So instead, I am going to I am going to say file find first. And actually, you know what? Before I do that. Before I do that, uh, where is the vertex format defined? I'm going to remove the texture coordinate from the vertex format first. Uh, so uh, the vertex format is no longer going to contain a texture coordinate. Any any vertex text chord that is added, um, uh, for in this case the floor, is not going to have a texture coordinate. That is fine. I think uh, we are technically sampling from the um, from a texture when we're drawing the floor so that we can like get the color, but there are ways around that. And it's not worth keeping the texture in the vertex format just for that. And also I believe in, and this isn't actually used anywhere still, I don't think, actually, yes it is, like the bullet model still uses this, but load model, we can, instead of um, loading the texture coordinate from that that part of the, uh, of the plain text that's loaded in, we can just not load a vertex, uh, not not load the, the texture UV. Okay. If I try to uh, if I try to run the game now, I bet it'll look really bad. And I kind of want to see what it looks like. I like to call it GPU vomit. You can't even, you can barely even see what this is supposed to be. This, this is actually, okay, draw did fail due to an invalid vertex layout this time. Uh, this is actually not as, as messy as I expected it to look. If you have like an off by one error in your, um, in your vertex buffer somewhere, you can get some really, really weird looking results, uh, which I like to call GPU vomit. Because it also looks suspiciously similar to what happens sometimes when your GPU starts to die, which hopefully is not actually the case for anyone right now. Anyway, bulk processing these uh, these 3D models. So I'm going to open up a little file find stream, file find first. Um, 3D models can be found in a few different places in this game. Uh, for example, uh, the foes folder. So if I were to go into, I have to look up how this, how this works every single time, but I'm pretty sure if I were to go into Okay, I can just say file find first, uh, for example, foes slash asterisk dot vbuff. And I, I was about to literally type out asterisk dot vbuff, but that is that is actually not the not the correct mask. Um, and I believe I can just specify a zero for the uh, for the mask. Yes, you do not wish to add any attribute to zero. This is this is like arcane Windows file system properties like hidden files and that sort of thing, which I don't really care about. Um, I'm just gonna call it fn for file name. Uh, while fn is not equal to an empty string, we can iterate over over every file in the uh, the foes folder. And then at the end, fn is going to equal file find next. And then when we're done, file find close to end that file find stream. Uh, for now, show message fn. This should just show a message box with every vertex buffer that is found in that folder. We'd just like to make sure that we are indeed uh, finding the correct files. And indeed we are, and zero.vbuff, and one, and so on in alphabetical order. And after that, the game is going to not work super well, so we can close the game. Okay, so let me let me create myself another temporary stuff script. Let me call this 
process vbuff. Uh, this is gonna take a file name. Uh, this is gonna load buffer var. Buffer is gonna equal buffer load file name. Uh, when we're done, buffer delete buffer. Uh, I'm gonna create myself, I think, um, a new buffer. First, uh, we're not actually gonna deal with vertex buffers here. We are instead going to just deal with raw bytes and raw raw data. Uh, the number of, so what we had before was a 36 byte vertex format. So I'm just gonna say var old vertex size is gonna equal 36. Uh, var new vertex size is gonna be 28. If you were to add up the attributes, we have uh, three four byte floats. So that's 12 bytes for the position. Same thing for the normal. So that's 24 bytes for the normal and one 32 bit integer for the color. That is four bytes for the color. If you were to add 12 plus 12 plus four, uh, that is a vertex size of 28 bytes. Um, whereas the old one also had two four bit floating, four byte floating point text coordinates, uh, which would make it add up to 36. So um, var vertices is going to be buffer uh, get size buffer divided by old vertex size of our new buffer let's call it is going to equal buffer create i'm just going to say buffer actually it's going to be ver to seize times new vertex size uh the type is going to be buffer fix the alignment is going to be one and for let's just say var i equals zero i is less than actually i don't need that really i can just say um repeat vertices to make it slightly simpler and let me just read out each of the values of our xx is going to be buffer read which is a 32-bit flow, x, x, y, y, z, z, normal, 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 and color. I'm going to call that cc is going to be a u32 instead of an f32. Um, y, y, z, z, n, x, n, y. Every, type I, every time I type n, x, I think of the Nintendo Switch's code name. Um, there's also var x, t is going to be something like that, and var y, t is going to be something like that also. We are not going to use x, t, and y, t. Instead, let's write this data back into the new buffer. Buffer write, uh, new buffer type, buffer f32. The value is gonna be xx, uh, three normals, and a color. And the color is a u32. Um, I can just copy and paste these variable names here, like that. And we're just simply rewriting them into a new buffer, emitting the texture coordinates. After that, uh, buffer uh, save. Uh, I can call it fn. No, was it fn or file name? File name. Um, oh, I need the, uh, the new buffer to go first. New buffer is the first argument. Uh, this is going to... If you, if you don't know where this is going to save the file, it's going to be in the... Um, the temporary files, I, I shouldn't call it a temporary files. It's gonna be in local storage on your device. And that is going to, uh, that's gonna be in the local app data folder by default. And I will navigate to that in a minute. Uh, let me, Let me just print out the name of the file that we're saving. But in any case, this should now, if I were to go into my user folder, if I were to go into the app data folder, which is a hidden folder, local um, bombardier should be somewhere at the top. And it did not. Why did it not save? Oh, you know why it didn't save? Because I didn't actually call this code anywhere. Um, we need to process the vbuff like that. And now that code is actually going to write. We should see a bunch of a bunch of text popping out in the console telling us that we have converted our buffers, and we have a an error here. Oh, you know what? Yeah, because uh, fn is only the uh, the actual file name, and this is stored in a folder somewhere.
So we need to actually tell it to look in that folder. Computers are hard. All right, there we go. We saved our uh, we saved our data buffers. We see them appearing in Windows Explorer over here. Uh, these are these should be slightly smaller than the originals, and indeed we can see that it looks like they're about ten percent smaller, maybe a little a little more than that. Uh, Fourteen kilobytes to eleven kilobytes for the ants. Uh, the grasshopper is the biggest, thirty-one kilobytes down to twenty-four kilobytes. That's actually closer to twenty-five percent savings. Uh, regardless. Um, settings.json, <laughs> that is not, that is not relevant to, uh, 3D, 3D data. So that's the foes that have been processed. Um, next is going to be, I'm going to do maps last. Next, let's do environments. Um, this is going to be all the Kenny models. So let's run the game and convert each of these. And did it actually? Did I misspell that folder name? I didn't see it pop up in the, the console. I may have misspelled the word environment. Copy paste. Oh, it's environment singular. No, no, uh, no S at the end. This is why it's nice to work out like your asset production pipeline before you actually make the game. Did it work there? I wasn't lurking, looking. And it looks like it did. Okay. So here we have converted all of these objects. Let me sort by now. Yeah, let me let me just grab all those. And in here, how much total data is this? This should be a fair few megabytes. That is 12 megabytes. This should be down to about 10 megabytes. Nine point six. All right. Um, I'm just gonna delete all of these. the uh, The settings JSON is in here somewhere. Settings. Settings JSON. Oh, uh, it's, it's up at the top for some reason. Okay. So there's that. And lastly, lastly, the last set of a uh, vertex buffers that I need to convert are the maps. Uh, uh, fused files. This does not have a vbuff extension. Maps. And the file extension is fused. And that should, that may take a little while because these are a little bit bigger. Um, and there's slightly more data to crunch. We can see it's actually taking a, taking a moment for each of these. Um, but at the end of the day, we should have all of these and they should be um, taking up 35 megabytes to uh... oh, that's the collision. 35 megabytes to 45 megabytes. So, yeah, that did that did cut down a fair amount on the size. If I were to look at the amount of space that the included files take up now, we're down to 47. That's we saved 13 megabytes. Okay. So this should allow the game to actually run and draw stuff without complaining about invalid vertex layouts. And it is not. What else what else is failing to be drawn? Uh, there is the ground, which is using that format and it's not using a texture coordinate. There is fuse map entities, which is I, this is one of the other things that I had in mind that I will need to uh, to deal with, but I don't believe it's it's being called now. So I just want to see the game running first. Um, that's in the editor. That shouldn't be being called. That's also in the editor. And okay, where is where is the invalid vertex layout coming from then? This the rest of this is an S part. If I were to comment out, if I were to comment out the part where, for example, the game is rendered, like the fuse stuff, would that would that make the error go away? Can I isolate it like this? I didn't expect this to work with no issue, but I was hoping that um. 
Okay, so that's not it. I'm just gonna comment out stuff until, until everything's good. Nope, not that. Okay, you know what? Let me, let me search my code for vertex text cord and just see if there's where I can I can get rid of any others. A lot of this is going to be an S part, uh, but there is also this is where we fuse the um, fuse the the vertex buffers. I guess I can address it here as well. Uh, have I hard-coded a vertex size into any of this? I have. This needs to be 28. Um, X text and Y text, goodbye. X text 2 and Y text 2, goodbye. X text 3 and Y text 3, goodbye. Um, text coordinates are, for hopefully obvious reasons, not transformed. Uh, so I don't have to look in there. And when they're written back into the new vertex buffer, That ought to do it. What's left? Okay, so this is when you're in the editor, you're you're kind of drawing the um, debug lines so that you can see where the boundaries of the field are. I can delete that. I can also delete this. And seems like the only other place where, where vertex text cord is used is um, when you're drawing the, the line. Position 3D, normal color. At the end of render, um, am I actually resetting the shader? Because I kind of need to do that. I probably am. I don't see why I wouldn't be. Yeah, I am shader resetting this. I forgot to edit this one. All right, you get rid of the texture coordinate. You get rid of the texture coordinate. Uh, you get rid of the texture coordinate in the fragment shader. Uh, we are no longer going to be using this. Um, where is the actual varying defined? We don't need that. Also unlit, is this uh, I don't think this is used, but while we're at it, I'll remove this as well. Like that and like this. All right, that's probably everything. Can the game work now, please? I should probably uncomment some of the stuff that I commented out um, <clears throat> when it came to drawings such as... There is a... Is something wrong with the skybox? What, what's going on? Oh, you know what? Um, the skybox was also using a texture, wasn't it? Anyway, we can see the ground is, uh, the ground is not green or pink or um, sandy colored or whatever color it was using. Uh, instead, Instead, it's just like off white. Let's see. If I were to send in, if I were to send in the bugs, that looks fine. If I were to build a tower, that looks fine. If I were to upgrade the tower, that's not going to change the way the game looks, but it's going to make me feel better because we're going to be doing more damage. The popping noise is like weirdly satisfying. You're apparently at your max level already. Oh, why does why is that like drawing with its normals? What what is that? Can I do that again? Interesting. So when it's selected before it's built, these things are now like their color is being influenced by their normals, which is odd. All right. Well, first things first. Let's commit this. Nuked the. nukes the texture coordinates on almost everything. That is going to be a very large commit. Um, next, where is the skybox drawn? 
And what, uh... SHD solid color, is that... No... Hmm. Oh, you know what? Yes, that's also a problem. This is ex expecting a texture coordinate. It's not getting one. That's most likely why um, its color was, was ending up being its normals. All right. Actually, is it? I don't know if that's true or not. Let me run the game now and find out. Is there anywhere else where... No, nowhere else. I don't think... Let me search for this. Where else is this vertex attribute being used? This is in the outline shader. That's fine. That's allowed to be there because that's just drawing like basically sprites. Um, SPR billboard is used in there. That's fine. SHD tower radius. Okay, that fixed the issue with the um with the towers being drawn with essentially their normals as their vertex color, which I have to say, that it looks cool. Not what I'm looking for, though. Uh, this is tower radius. I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's this is for drawing sprites also, like drawing game maker sprites. We can leave that texture coordinate there. Um, the outline, that's the, the DFDY fun. That's uh, that's fine. Uh, selected vertex, where is this used? Is this shader actually used anywhere anymore? I might have gotten rid of this. Yeah, this shader isn't used anymore. That was the flashing, the flashing color that looked really bad and that I, I will not be shipping the game with. We can get rid of that. Alright, let's go back to, let's go back to this. Um, tower radius, I already looked at that one. Magnifying glass beam. Uh, this also should probably get rid of the texture coordinate. Forgot about that one. That would probably cause a fun draw failed to invalid vertex layout issue should I try to run the game like that and pass through vertex. Is this used for anything? Uh, was this also just a temporary thing? If I, were to, if I were to search my code for this. Oh, that's what. Transparent render objects. Okay, so that's, um. That's for the magnifying glasses. Okay. I'll leave that alone then. Huh. <sighs> By leaving alone, I mean I won't delete it. I don't mean I'll, I'll keep the normal. I mean the texture coordinate. All right. So this should, and I'm gonna I'm gonna build a. <laughs> Oops. I'm gonna build a magnifying glass tower, uh, just so that I can I can check that it that it's working, that all the shaders are are working as intended. Um, and then I'll deal with the whatever's going on on the skybox. Uh, where am I looking? Magnifying glass. Okay. So let's send that in. Uh, we have both like the beam, which is being drawn, and also the glass, which is also being drawn. Okay, good. I That's what I want. Uh, the beam and also the glass. This is probably my favorite tower. It is completely overpowered, and it needs to be nerfed. But I, I just like... Someone suggested this in the comments. I'm really glad someone suggested this because it was a lot of fun to work on and I like its effect. And I, I also like its its um its theming. Being like the whole bugs thing. And I'm probably gonna die because that's a lot of things leaking through. Alright, back to title. All right, so we can say fixed a few.
Fix a few more instances where texture coordinates were used. Uh, I would like to figure out what's going on with the skybox. I believe... I'm in the wrong code file. Oh, it's right here. I believe... Due to the fact that... Hmm... You know what I totally can do, is instead of dealing with doing a throwing a skybox, I can just, like, use this sprite to fill the back buffer. I can totally just do that. That might be the path of least resistance. Um, if this works, I will, I will stretch it to fill, otherwise, I'll, I'll, uh, I might have to reset the camera manually. I don't think I'll have to reset the camera manually. Nope, okay, it looks like I actually do. Hang on, are we, are we draw clearing by any chance? Ha! Yes, we are. Okay, so I think I was just making this a little bit, a little bit more complicated for myself than it really needs to be. There we go. Now the sprite is being being drawn to fill the uh, to fill the screen. Can I actually now that that's been like figured out? Um, can I put that in here and not have to deal with the pre-draw? Uh, sort of. Let me, uh, GPU set Z. GPU set Z right enable. You would want a real skybox if you had the ability, there we go. You would want a real skybox if you had the ability to, um, to rotate the camera, but since we do not, since this is a rather fixed perspective camera, we really don't need the ability to um, to rotate the camera, and we really don't need a skybox to rotate with us. Um, one more thing, though. Camera.render. Sometimes you do want this to, uh, to clear the screen. Uh, sometimes you do want this to draw clear. Hang on, wait. So, I'll just, I'll leave that out of camera's render method itself and just put that in after the surface at target draw clear alpha c black zero i mean one over here uh on the outline surface and everything should be back to normal now and we shouldn't have any any drama with uh um with the backgrounds or outlines or anything like that okay good that's good that's what i want to see i can draw you over here and we can, like, even if I put you behind the tree, we can see the outline, which is good. Uh, there's still the matter of the ground, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do that when I do terrain. I do, I do eventually want to do a little bit with terrain, uh, because I do think, I do think the, the stage floating in space looks kind of bad. Let's see. Skybox cube, we no longer need this. Test ball. Do we even need that anymore? Can I like remove that? Why is oh that's the that's a path node. All right. I was thinking test ball like the uh, the thing that I was using to like test in the um, the ray casting video, like shooting a ray off into space. But no. All right. So I can I can delete foe.d3d. Can I? That's not used anywhere. Oops, accidentally killed the search results. Um, let's see, I can close that window. Uh, skybox, foe, and skybox. Those can both be deleted. We're going to save all of 3.87 kilobytes by removing those files, but you know what? Less clutter. I can also get rid of that comment, can't I? 
Maybe I should like before I before I uh, make the final build, I should just do code maintenance and like fix comments that are inaccurate and add comments in places where um, where they probably should be. These like environment objects DS maps. This could be a struct. This was written before 2.3.1 when um, the struct access or was was added. Uh, instead of being a DS map, it doesn't. It's not hugely important, but it it would feel better to to make that a struct anyway. Simple skybox and removing unused files. That's going to be this commit. Uh, let me real quick just grab that subil filter so that we're uh, we don't use DFTX anymore. And I'm totally just going to copy and paste my own code for this. Uh, where is shader shd underscore sobel? The vertex shader is passed through. The fragment shader just looks like this. And it should take the same input and output. Oh, no, I will need the uniform for texture size. Um, SHD outline. We only really need the, the texture coordinate varying. We don't need the um, the color. Yeah, can get rid of that. And let me just. What is the uniform for texture size? That's just the size of the surface that we're submitting as a texture, right? I'm 95% sure that's what that is. Um, objects, camera, draw 64 is the GUI event, and text size is, yeah, the height and width of the surface. Okay. Let us just substitute in those values, <clears throat> and we should now have a uh, we should now have a subil filter that works on the Raspberry Pi. Um, you, I accidentally deleted that, didn't I? All right, we should now have a subil filter that does outlines on the Raspberry Pi without just a black screen. All right, I was hoping I can get away without. No, apparently. What was um. Oh, it was, it was being written into the uh, into the alpha channel. That's why. Uh, one point zero, uh, one, 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 and final. So writing it to the color instead of the alpha. All right, there we have it, and we should have ourselves an outline. That's actually less pixelated than before. That's actually considerably less pixelated than before. You you could argue that that looks a lot better, actually. If you want it to look pixelated, you could shrink the size of the um, uh, the outline surface texture. But all right, no matter. I'm gonna build you there. We're gonna just build a flypaper dispenser because that looks satisfying. That is such a traffic cone. I don't even know what that's supposed to look like. All right. Wow. That's cool. Let's see. Uh, the outline shader is now so bell. I'll, I guess I'll specify dfdx and dfdy. I'm hopeful that um, there is a graphics API update coming to GameMaker in the future. I don't know how extensive it's going to be. Uh, pretty much the only thing I know about it is that, um, compute, compute shaders are going to be involved, or are plans to be involved anyway, because this is quite a long ways off. I, I hope that we can, we can have a newer version of OpenGL, which supports partial derivatives on certain other platforms that aren't Windows and, and that sort of thing. Um... <clears throat> Let's see, my Raspberry Pi is actually set up right now, so I can, I can um, set the export target to Ubuntu, and I can just boot up my, uh, my capture card so that you can see how this is, how this is going. 
I don't know if taking out the texture lookups, I don't know if um, taking out the, the texture 2Ds from the, uh, like the world shader is going to have a noticeable impact on performance on the Raspberry Pi. I hope it will, because not having to do that on every fragment that's drawn will, you know, be less work that the Raspberry Pi's like 24 core half a gigahertz GPU have to do, but uh, that remains to be seen. Is the game still running from when I was messing with this a couple days ago? How has... Uh, can I close this? How has, how has the Raspberry Pi, like, not melted a hole in my desk? Anyway, this is, uh, I'm going to run, I'm going to run the game on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, let me not, not, not do BTD on one of these videos. Let me actually open up, uh, Game Maker. Let me run this on the Raspberry Pi and let me see how it performs. All right, I am interested to see what this is going to look like. Another thing I could do is, and I mentioned this when I talked about making the, um, uh, making the, like, the outlines more pixelated, less, less smooth. I could always shrink the size of the, uh, the outline surface further. And I see the game window has appeared, and come on. There we go, okay. Uh, we have 250 FPS real. That doesn't really mean much. It looks like... Performance is not very good, unfortunately. 10 FPS. Um, we still have a high resolution, like, game being drawn. Uh, if I were to set the scale down to, like, 0.5. Alright, we're getting, we're getting 19 FPS here. 20. It's not great. What if I were to set the scale down to, uh, to a quarter, the minimum? This is not going to look good at all, but we're going to get... 24 FPS. Ooh. Okay, this is hard. The game does not know where I'm allowed to build. The outline looks the outline still looks very smooth. I could I can definitely bump the resolution of that outline down a little bit. Um okay, so as to why the um the build surface is all messed up, I'm not a hundred percent sure why that is. I will fix that bug another day. I don't know if that's specific to the Raspberry Pi. I don't know if that's because of the resolution scale, but I'll find out later. I'm just gonna close out of this now. Uh, was there anything to, to commit? No, there was not. I'm just gonna close out of that now and add a... I guess this would be high priority because it interferes with gameplay. Okay. So that's another issue. Um, again, I feel like I should be using the issue tracker for this, but by the time I remembered that, that was something that was on GitHub, it was kind of, they were already here to begin with. Um, I would like to move this one to closed, however, because that's what we did today. Uh, next time. What do I want to do next time? I'm not sure what I want to do next time. Uh, might be terrain. I've been thinking about not having the game being stages that are floating off in space for a while. Um, it might be fixing some of these other minor issues that have cropped up, such as fixing the whatever's going on on the Raspberry Pi, um, fixing the issue where poison towers and um, slow towers cannot target the track because they don't know where the track is, setting for particle density, that kind of thing. Uh, I do need to do another week of, of game balance. I do need to finish level design. And honestly, after that, I think it's, it's time to make a build. I kind of want to do like an achievements menu just because that sounds fun and I like doing that. Uh, but I don't know if, like, I'll have the energy to work on something like that by the time, by the time I get down to the end. Um, let's see. First, however, I did say... Macros. Okay, outline surface width. Uh, where is that defined? That is... Uh, that, that was defined in the Raspberry Pi macros. I should probably put that in, like, the regular game. Outline surface width. I do not need this to have full resolution. Let me let me cut this in half, 640 by like 360. And on the Raspberry Pi, it can be like can't divide evenly by three. Oh, duh, it's 128. Let's say 426 by 720 divided by three is going to be 240. All right, 426 and 240. 
Okay, so that'll uh, that'll make the outline look a little bit more pixely on Windows, and on the Raspberry Pi, it'll mean we have like a third as many pixels to fill on that render target. All right, that that outline still looks good. It's actually slightly thicker that way. That's cool. All right, um, and just because I, I have to know, what does it look like on the Pi? Okay, so we're up to we're up to about like high 20s FPS, that's that's not bad. Uh, we have, um, the outline is indeed slightly thicker on these things, which I, again, I do not mind. I kind of like that more than I expected to like it. Um, hmm. All right, like I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be losing sleep if this thing can't run at at least like 45 FPS on a Raspberry Pi, but it would be nice. Um, the, uh, the outline, like the flat shaded outline, uh, surface certainly did not have the most complicated shader running on it. So reducing the number of fragments that it runs on is probably, uh, not going to, wow, the health bars is probably not going to, um, really help performance as much as like reducing the game resolution. Uh, if I were to open up settings and, uh, reduce the base resolution. That gonna help? 30, 31, barely, barely 30 FPS. I mean, I can process multiple, uh, multiple uh, game steps per per step, but all right, whatever. All right, that's that's really just a curiosity. I'm sure in three or four years, a Raspberry Pi Five is gonna come out and it's gonna have a, a noticeably stronger GPU. But all right. Um, That's going to be the last one. I'm going to mark this as 0 0.57 as a release. Uh, this can be, we, we can work this out on GitHub as um, 0 0.57. All right, there we go. If you want the code for this, link to this GitHub repository and this release will be down in the video description. I am gonna stop now. I, I have been recording this video for a long time. Not as long as some of the previous ones, but still been uh, getting up there in the, in the duration and the runtime. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Uh, you can see your name in the credits, hear yourself shouted out at the end of each and every one of these videos. You can see a bit of a preview of my future plans. And if you were to, uh, if you were to pledge, I would definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one tutorial tutorial. I hope you all found that interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Connor, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.